Hi, this is Reg Atwal and welcome to our channel for another one of our shows, this time for Next Gen Entrepreneurs, where I get a chance to interview an entrepreneur, a Next Gen Entrepreneur is doing some amazing work in the region here. We're talking about the UAE, Middle East, GCC and Africa region here and how this person, special guest, I've known you for almost 15 years now, has impacted over 600 entrepreneurs and working with over 600 entrepreneurs right now supporting their growth. The gentleman we have as our guest today is BJ Rajnikant Shah. He's based out of Dubai. Incredible story, not only as a next gen, but also a family business, husband and wife dream team. So let me tell you a bit about him. He's the national director for Business Network International. Most people know this brand, BNI. If you haven't heard of it from before, we'll ask BJ a few questions and give us an intro on this organization. And he's the national director for UAE, United Arab Emirates and Qatar. And he's also the co-national director for BNI, Kenya and Uganda. For those of you who don't know about BNI, it's a global organization with almost 10,000 chapters around the world in 70 countries, impacting hundreds of thousands of business owners and entrepreneurs. BJ is also on the advisory board of a company in Kenya, it's the largest books and stationery supplier in East and Central Africa called Textbook Center, which is headquartered in Nairobi, Kenya. He's won many awards with BNI. He's also a co-author of a best-selling book called The World's Best Known Marketing Secrets. Hopefully, he'll give us a few secrets from that book shortly. And he work, works the business with uh, I know his wife in the UAE. And hopefully, he'll tell us a little bit more about what's it like working with your spouse your life partner, and give us a few tips of how we get that right. Lastly, I was doing the numbers for BNI and the region that he uh, covers and his business. And to date, he's helped all the entrepreneurs do more than $300 million worth of business between them. So that's incredible. So let's find out more. BJ, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. And uh, lovely you. backdrop there. It looks like you're, you're floating in the sky of Dubai there. Yes, I, I really wish um, I mean, this, this, is, this is my one of my vision boards in an office with a view like this. Okay. Well, I suppose that's better than being on the top of Burj Khalifa. That could be painful. Well, Burj Khalifa is <laughs> 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 so, so let's So get, let's get into this uh, episode, BJ. Real pleasure here. I think, first of all, congratulations to you. I think it's been, what, 15 or 16 years now since you established this business. Is that right? Yeah, this is our 15th year, and um, I think it was roughly around the same time I first met you. So that's right, yeah. And like uh, that's what relationships is all about, isn't it? 100%, yes. I mean, one of the things I learned from you probably the first year we met, which I believe is the philosophy of what you do with BNI, working with entrepreneurs, is tell me if this is correct. It, was it giver's gain? That's a philosophy, yes, absolutely. Could you expand yeah. on that for us? What does that mean? How, how should entrepreneurs and business owners adopt this? And why is this such a powerful principle for business? Sure. Look, I, I, I don't, you know, we've just coined this phrase, but it's not uh, unique to, to our organization. Um, I think everybody out there, whether it's spiritually, religion, um, people generally believe most people believe what goes around comes around, you know, the law of karma, for example. Mm. Um, and what we've done is, uh, you know, we've found that this can also apply in business. Um, unfortunately, what happens with capitalism out there, um, you know, with cutthroat competition, all that sort of stuff, um, as much as human beings are, are, you know, by their DNA, they want to help each other. Um, when it comes to business, unfortunately, because of the kind of experience people would have had, um, when it comes to helping each other in business, uh, that's something which, you know, is uh, not really seen as, as positive, or at least it wasn't. Um, but we've been doing this for 35 years in an organization. And I think if you look at um, the younger generation today, um, the C word is no longer about competition, it's about collaboration. So it's all about how can you actually work with people, collaborate with people and help each other. The more you give to others, you know, help people, support people, it comes back in so many different ways. So the law of karma, if you want to put it, or the law of reciprocity. And then we've done that into, into our business philosophy. You know, if all our members are there to help each other and, and give to each other, mm -hmm. then all of them will benefit and, and get as, uh, back. And how does one start with that? Let's assume that 
when we talk about next gen entrepreneurs, you know, there are different types of next gen entrepreneurs, ones who start businesses in their sort of late 30s, maybe 40s, some even in their 50s. And then you've got the next gen, next gen, you know, our children's generation, which are typically in their right now early 20s who are setting up companies. So if, if, you, if you're developing a startup, you're starting from scratch and you follow that principle, what, what sort of tips do you have for the viewers? Where do you start? How do you embrace giver's gain? Where do you go to, to enable that to happen? Look, um, give, giving is, I mean, you know, if, I think the question you've got to ask yourself is what do you have to offer and give to others? Um, and there's so many different things, right? You may have knowledge, you may have experience, uh, uh, advice to give to people. You may actually have introductions to make to people. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got a lot of experience, you know, you could be a starter from a business point of view, but the fact that you're starting something out means that you have some experience in that particular field, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably have a network of people. And, and the idea is, you know, as you continue deepening that network and also building that network uh, further, mm. how can you help people in your network? How can you help each other? Um, that's, I, I think, I would say the starting point, you know, and there are so many different ways to help, right? And what um, about the opposite to that? Why, why do you feel a lot of people don't do that? People, I, I think it's a, well, first and foremost, I think it's uh, about trust. Um, people um, may not have the trust. They, they may ask themselves, you know, is there a secret agenda here? Um, why is this person really being so nice and helping me? Um, <laughs> yeah. That sort of thing, you know, but if you really, I mean, there's a great book, a uh, guy called Adam Brunt, um, and, and the book is titled Give and Take. And uh, if anybody is, you know, watching this, they may want to pick up that book. Um, you know, what he talks about is there are three kinds of people out there. There are givers, uh, there are takers, and then there are what we call matchers, people who keep score. People oh, are like, you know, every time they get something from somebody yeah. out of, gratitude, they'll say, okay, let me see how I can kind of repay back. Um, and what Adam says is people who give unconditionally without any expectations sleep much better. Um, but you've got to be mindful, you know, because the people across on the other side of the table, uh, what kind of people those are, because if they are just takers, then of course you can be taken for a ride. So you've got to develop a sort of, uh, yeah, and over time, you know, you do develop some sort of gut instinct and you can tell if somebody is genuinely there to, to want to work and collaborate with you, or are they there to take, 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 and of course- Take, you know, take, yeah. take a quick buck, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and I, I suppose with another episode I just did recently with a good friend of ours, uh, Phil Bedford, um, you know, we were expanding and talking about how there's two types of people there with, with referrals as well, and, and love to get your opinions. You know, the ones who, they do want to commission or take something, and then others who are doing it maybe more for significance or the ego. It, are those the only two or is there any other reasons why somebody wants to then give back? Look, um, I think just the joy of helping somebody and watch them uh, become successful um, is very rewarding. Um, so if you do it purely for that, so it's not for like two reasons, like you said, um, not expecting anything as far as a cut or a commission or the ego, uh, a lot of people, you know, I've come across uh, very humble. They would not even want to make a whole song and dance about it. But quietly, they go about their own, you know, work and, and where they come across people, they will help them. Mm. I mean, these are people who are extremely successful. In fact, if you look at a lot of successful people out there and you ask them, you'll find that, you know, in their lives, they will have, and they continue to do so, um, how they help people. Giving back in many ways, you know, giving back to it. And I think there is something, I'm, I'm not a scientist or a biologist, but I'm sure if you research it, um, it'll tell you that when you give, when you help others, you know, whether it's charitable, whether it's in other ways, um, a certain, um, you know, um, um, what, what do you call it? hormone is released. Right. And uh, it, it's, it's a positive hormone. It's good for you. It's good for your soul. So I think we're clear on, on giver's gain. I think this is good as a philosophy. Um, and now what about the 600 or so entrepreneurs that you've worked with, you know, your tribe, your community, the people that you serve as your clients. Mm -hmm. Could you share stories of what people have done to grow their businesses? You know, what's a pattern that you've seen? What are the things that you've seen that work? And if you were to run a training program right now on how to become a great entrepreneur and accelerate business growth, these would be the five things that you should do. What would they be? Um, you know, the kind of people that I come across, if you look at the kind of members that we serve, 
Uh, most of them tend to be solopreneurs, people who are relatively new in business, um, small businesses, right? And if you look at their journeys, um, some of them actually come from a corporate background. And for them, when they come from corporate to thinking, right, I'm ready to start my own business, I want to now work for myself. Um, many of them are not prepared. They think, you know, the corporate world is totally different. Everything is set for you. Um, whereas when you start your own business, um, and I'm sure you can resonate this with uh, Reg, mm. you know, you are everything. If you look at your org chart of your company, if you look at all the different positions, you pretty much fit all those boxes. You may not have the resources to, you know, create, form that team. But a lot of these people are not prepared for that. They think um, that all the other things are taken care of, the admin and the accounts and, you know, uh, whereas when you're starting your own business, you realize, hold on, I got to do all of these things. That's right. um, so we come across a lot of those kind of people um, who are moving in from corporate to uh, starting their own business. And then, of course, we have people who don't have that corporate uh, experience and they're kind of street savvy. They're probably successful in what they do. But again, they have not uh, realized the power of the network. How can you surround yourself with the right kind of people? and really get a lot of stuff done through the people and the relationships. You know, you mentioned the relationship at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I learned very early on is, uh, you know, so asking about, you know, the five things that uh, somebody needs to really look at starting out, whether it's next gen, whether it's a startup. Uh, one, the first thing I would say always is relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I'll show you a story, short story. Sure. I started my career, you know, after graduating in finance, um, mid nineties, it was a recession. Those of you who have been around uh, for that long, not that I'm, I'm, I'm not even 50 <laughs> yet. Um, yes. I remember graduating in 1994 and uh, there was a recession at the time and it wasn't that easy, you know, getting a job. Um, I found myself in a bank and then uh, my passion lied in things like trading and, you know, stocks and shares and, um, and I got into that and um, this was now running up. So, you know, the bull market had started running up to the, um, uh, the year 2000 um, where we had this dot-com bubble yeah. and I was naive. I was pretty fresh at the game. And I remember in front of the computer doing trading, stocks, shares, currencies and everything you know you, you kind of touched turned into gold right yes and obviously i was young i had ego i thought right i'm good at this not realizing that you know you could have thrown a dartboard at the dart at the dartboard and picked anything and it could have made money mm -hmm. so i can remember myself i even openly declared this i said i could do this for the rest of my life you know i don't need to work with people i, I you know you don't need to worry about relationships you can be in front of a screen um and you make money this way and you're sorted um, little did I know a few years later, I'll find myself doing what I do today, which is the exact opposite. You know, um, I learned really on, you know, the crash happened, of course, lost half of everything I made. Yeah. Um, and what I learned was, no, um, this was temporary. It was not my skill set. It just happened to be, you know, in, in that place. And had I been smart, then I would have gotten out early and not lost what I did. Um, but, you know, relationships and people, I, I released it. I, I ended up, you know, um, learning from a lot of uh, gurus out there. there. There's some great books out there. Uh, if you, you know, come across Stephen Covey, one of the things he talks about, yes. um, you know, interdependence. So a lot of people start the journeys as, as children. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to be dependent. Um, and then as we become young adults, we want to be independent. And, and people think that's it, yeah. The, the goal is to become independent. But really, if you're wise and you know, mature, you realize that actually it's interdependence. If right, it's building a network of people who you can depend on each other and support so each one, other. So one thing you're saying, BJ, definitely is you've got to get out of your comfort zone, okay? It may be uncomfortable to, to, to start with, whether it's in your environment like BNI in a, in a nice private setting with other people and building your network or looking at other inner circles or networks. But bottom line is you've got to get yourself out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you do got to get out yourself out there. And, you know, I'm an introvert. Um, if you ask me, and a lot of people find it surprising given my role and, you know, what my position, um, if I told them uh, I'm an introvert, they'll be like, no ways. People who know me well, of course, know that. I would very much prefer to be locked in a room by myself and do my own thing. Um, but like you said, yeah, stretch out, get, get out there. Uh, you've got to meet people. You've got to build relationships. But not only that, Reg, you know, networking is also about not just making and meeting new people. 
but really asking yourself, and, and the current times are interesting, you know, who are the people already in your network and how well do you know them? How deep is your relationship with them? I don't think a lot of people realize that. Uh, when you're trying to grow your business, people think that, right, you just go out there and meet lots and lots and lots of people. Uh, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you've got low-hanging food. You've got people already in your network you have a relationship with. And if you dig deeper, you'll actually find that, you know, there's so much over there itself. You don't really have to go out. Um, you're right. I think, I think, and this is where the debate comes up a lot between, you know, quantity versus quality and then substance. You know, I remember a few years ago, going through this with my Facebook, you know, when you get to that limit of 5,000 yeah. and, uh, and there's people who wanted to, 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 to connect with me and I thought, oh, I can't accept them. Then I thought, hang on a second, why have I got 5,000 people in the first place? Who are all these people? That I, my wife used to say, you're a collector of people, right? <laughs> so who are all these people that I'm collecting and do I know them? So then I, I came up with a criteria, BJ, which was, and I think you probably know, you know, when, when time I was doing this and I put it on Facebook and I said, okay, have, have we ever met before? Yes or no? If we have, right, you're in. Two, have we, have we at least spoken once? Okay, you're in. Okay, have never met you, have never spoken to you, out. Yeah. And I'm glad I'm part of your 5,000, Rich. Sorry? I'm, part, I'm glad I'm part of your inner circle of 5,000. You're part of the inner circle because we went down to 700 and... Uh, now I may have gone up by 50 people, but you know what? What a breath of fresh air, because then when the news feed came up afterwards, I'm like, wow, you know, I've met this person. I've spoken to this person. I know this person. This is what they're doing in their life. And it became so much easier. Now the only question I've got for you is, how does that apply to LinkedIn now or other social media outside of B&I face-to-face type sessions or virtually? Could I get your tips and thoughts around networking and, and building relationships online? through these different platforms? It's, it's an interesting question you asked, Reg. You know, I, I did a, re- I, I kind of did some analysis for myself uh, recently. I first joined, so I started this, uh, you know, with, with the journey with BNI in 2005. I joined Facebook um, in 2007, and I joined LinkedIn in, uh, earlier than that, in 2006. Um, so obviously it took me longer. I was much comfortable at LinkedIn LinkedIn, I think people associate primarily with uh, focus on business, but it is people who are, and it was actually, maybe not is anymore, mm. but people who are looking for jobs, you know, so pretty much you'll find people with their, with their CVs and, and all those people who are trying to make contact with each other are trying to see, okay, um, if I can sort of use this platform to find myself a new position or being headhunted. Uh, whereas Facebook, of course, was purely social. Over the years, um, uh, you know, so Facebook has not just become social, it's born more than that, um, where a lot of people have gotten a lot of business out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, LinkedIn is actually just starting out. If you ask me right now, literally in the last four or five months, the amount of LinkedIn requests I'm getting, um, simply because I think a lot of people are realizing, hold on, um, in, in the current situation, you know, if you need to have a digital presence, if you need to do more stuff online, then LinkedIn is perhaps better from a business perspective. Yeah. Um, I think, yes, LinkedIn, people understand LinkedIn to be a, a platform which you can talk about business, whereas in Facebook, you know, it's everything and anything. Yeah. These days, it's in politics, as we all know. Yeah, with, uh, and with Instagram, I've, I've discovered from my kids that I'm probably too old for it and my pictures are not beautiful enough. <laughs> I'm lost on Instagram, to be honest. Um, you know, we, we have Instagram. I don't use it. I have an account. Um, but I, I, I'm still down to get my head around it. Uh, but talking about, you know, all these online platforms, they're great. Um, but, you know, you've got to build a relationship. You've got to maintain that relationship. And uh, you can certainly use these platforms to get started. But ultimately, it does mean hooking up with somebody, meeting with them over a cup of coffee or in person, or these days, you know, that we all learned and realized it's actually not so difficult to do it virtually like what you and I are doing right now. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that, that, you know, it does take time and you need to connect with the other person. You've got to get to know them. Um, a lot of people think, right, I made a connection on LinkedIn. Let me do Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, Red, you know, the amount of uh, LinkedIn requests I get these days, I can tell by the profile of the person. First of all, you know, using that your theory, have I met this person? Do I know this person? Have I spoken to them? Um, I used to apply all of that earlier. Um, these days, I don't so much. 
because you know a lot of people kind of have heard of me, know me, so they want to connect with me. And I'm okay with that. Mm. But um, I can tell from them. So I like to see who else are they connected to. Um, and even then, I can pretty much tell that if I click and accept, I can be pretty much, um, you know, I like playing a game uh, to with myself. I say, okay, <laughs> let's see how long it takes before I receive that email or that message from them trying to try and pitch something to me. Well, it's instant yeah. these days, isn't it? It's automated. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, pretty much. And and the moment that happens, you know, I, I just kind of unconnect and disconnect them. Um, occasionally, if I have the time, I would, you know, again, pure education, I would write back to them and explain to them why or, you know, um, but I'm just getting far too many of those cases, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's just not the right approach. The approach would be better if you took some time in researching who that person is, what they do. Yeah, well, I mean, let, I mean, let's go back for a second, Bijo, before Facebook, how we met was originally through some people in the UK through something called Academy, what? and uh, which doesn't exist today. It was, it was way ahead of its time yeah. before Facebook and all these things came along. And it was all based around, yeah, there was a website, you had a basic profile, but it was all about face-to-face -face connections. And it was around having some lunches or dinners, intimacy, five, six people at a time. And to, to this day, because of Academy, and I hope, you know, our mutual friends Thomas and, and Penny Power mm -hmm. get a chance to to talk, watch this, and, and, and know that we're talking about them. And, and is is it came down to, as Penny puts it today in a, one of her books, I think that business is personal. Or well, in your case with BNI, you know, you're sharing breakfast and you're talking about referrals. Or if you take our good friend Gautam Ganglani with his new book Breaking Bread, and again the the focus on eating and being with each other you know what are your thoughts around that what tips can you give us around getting that bit right uh, for the future well first and foremost you know use the platforms to kind of at least keep in touch with you. i mean look at you and i um you know how often do we get a chance to perhaps uh, talk to each other or meet in person maybe not as often as we would like a year all of us are busy but um by us you know having that relationship already um following each other, I kind of know what's happening or you know what's happening in, in, in my life. Yeah. So social media is great from that perspective where, you know, I pick up the phone today, I, I talk to you, the last time I spoke to you would be like, say, six months ago, but I still know what you've been up to over the last six months. So it's easy to catch up, right? Um, so it's good from that perspective, but again, it's important. Um, and I think you've got to kind of create some sort of process which works for you best. But you've got to have a way in which you are able to either pick up the phone um, or, you know, send an email or WhatsApp or and just check in with that person. And, you know, when you, when you do that, it should never always be about having an agenda. You know, you don't only reach somebody out because you need something or um, it's just a hello, how are you or a check in. And if you do that regularly with uh, enough people, yeah. um, then, you know, that will be a great study. The other thing, of course, Reg, is being quite selective of um, your, your room, so to call it, or, or your network. Um, be careful who you surround yourself with. Right. Um, and, and, you know, you'll get rid of- how do, you, how do you assess that? When you say, be careful, you know, these days, people wear a lot of masks and uh, it takes a bit of time to find out someone's true character. You know, I've just exactly. been through that recently with someone who I thought I knew them really well and realized, wow, there were layers and layers of masks that they were wearing and what was on the outside of this charisma and fantastic communication and relationship inside was just basically built upon lies and not keeping their word and not being reliable. Um, so how do you, how do you, how do you decide who you hang out with and how do you know it's their true character? Um, it's a difficult one. I think it's about, so before you accept, obviously you've got to accept them and, and all of that, but before you have told yourself that, right, this is the kind of person that I would um, make part of my inner circle, if you want to call it inner circle, whatever you want to call it, mm. um, you just got to spend that time with that person to get to know them. And I think over experience, I mean, I don't think there's easy way on that. Um, I mean, you are an expert when it comes to HR and people. Um, and still, I would imagine, you know, when you're trying to recruit somebody, for example, I don't think there's a 100% guarantee that, that No, there is. isn't. But I think the point here, BJ, is that I, I could get it up to 90% accuracy with our DNA profiling and everything. But, but this recent situation completely threw me. You know, it really was because it's, 
yeah, I'm just shocked at how, forget DNA profiling talents and strengths, but I'm talking about manipulation here. No, I think I, I wish I had an answer for you that, uh, Reg, but it does come over with, with some experience, I think. Um, surely, I, and I can pretty much be assured that you would not um, fall for that again with anybody else because yeah. there'll be certain things that you'd have picked up. Uh, yeah, sometimes we just learn from experience. So, so I get about givers gain, I get about building your inner circle, build relationships, build trust, get out there, get out your comfort zone. What are some of the other things that you've seen with 600 entrepreneurs of the, a DNA, a thread that runs through them of why they're successful? What else are these people doing? Well, I think the question really is why are they, what, why are they doing what they're doing? Um, that's very, very important. So finding out their journey, how did they land up in what they're doing and what drives them, what gets them up every morning to do what they do. And if you're able to figure that out, you'll find that uh, not everybody, but many of them are there because that's something that they're very passionate about um, and they found a way of actually monetizing it and they love what they do. But I also come across a lot of people who have just found themselves in what they do by default. You know, um, for example, if you're talking about family uh, businesses, mm -hmm. you have your second, third, fourth generation. For them, um, you know, it would be something that was passed on. And that's where I see a gap. You know, I'll see some of these second, third or fourth generation businesses where they're really thriving and they're taking it to another level. And then you have others who may not have the same level of drive. Yeah. Um, so that begs the question then, you know, why are they doing what they are? And, and um, so I think there's a lot of... Um, uh, so you're talking, about, you're talking about passion, you're talking about purpose, you're talking about fire in the belly, you know, yeah. all of these type of things, yeah? Yeah, 100%, 100%. And yeah, not everybody is made out for that. Um, so... Somebody can look successful, but they still not. And, you know, what is the definition of success, right? Um, is it how, you know, are you, do you measure that by what you see? Is it materialistic? Of course, I think we all understand that's not always the case. I come across people, uh, Reg, who run successful businesses, large businesses, but when you get to know them, they are still, you know, there's some sort of vacuum inside. There's something missing. Mm -hmm. And I've met people who have made a shift or a change in what they do. And you ask them, hold on, you, you know, you had everything laid out for you. Why would you do that? And you come to know that, no, it wasn't about that. For them, it was something else. So having, having the courage to make that shift and change, because, you know, a lot of people these days uh, also get judged by friends, family, and, and society. So it takes a lot for somebody to actually make that, that um, shift. But once they've made it, then you can actually, you know, now, because, you know, I had been able to do this, some of these relationships go a long way. You get to know their journey and you get to see them, how they were, how they are today. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that if you're really, you know, if it's coming right from inside, um, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what other people think and they've actually um, made it for themselves. Anyway. So the next thing, next thing you're saying is really about getting to your core, you know, discovering what that is. As, as there's a couple of other episodes I've got on the channel, I'll never forget uh, Stefan from Germany you know, who sort of lost a billion dollars and woke up one day and said, right, or someone said to him, are you fulfilled? Mm. You know, what, what, what's your purpose and are you fulfilled? And he said, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. What is fulfillment? And then he went on his journey and eventually he discovered what makes him truly happy. And it wasn't necessarily about the next billion dollars, um, even though maybe that's what he thought it was at the beginning. So I think, yeah, I think valuable lesson about discovering that, experimenting, maybe trying different things until you get to that point. Let's go, going into the, the second half of our, of our episode today. What about family businesses and more importantly, your dream team, you and your wife? Um, talk us about what's worked well over the years. Uh, I can see your body language changing there already. And what are the things that haven't worked and are challenging sometimes and the advice that you can give to uh, other couples, someone working with their spouse, their life partner, or it could be two brothers. It could be a, a brother or sister or a father and son or a mother and daughter. What, what, what have you got for us, PJ, based on going uh, through this? Well, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share my personal story, right? And rather, my wife, everybody calls her Anna. So she's a pharmacist by profession. Um, my career started in financial services. Um, 
both of us, uh, you know, born and raised in Kenya, we uh, we met in the UK in college, and uh, she continued after you know college. She continued staying in back in the UK for ten years. She was a pharmacist, a community pharmacist. Um, so, you know, different sort of career paths, and. When it came to us moving to Dubai, it was purely on a whim. Um, I had an opportunity. I said, okay, let's see what this is. She had done 10 years of pharmacy and she said, okay, you know, maybe it's time to start planning for family and I'll, I'll obviously follow and support you and come there. Um, maybe I just need to take a break. And when we started the BNI journey, it was never, we didn't have a vision at that point. You know, it was purely uh, something that would help us in building a small network for myself in what I was doing. Um, so when that opportunity came up, I just asked her, I said, look, you know, I need a bit of help with admin. And I was just wondering if you can, uh, would, you, would you be okay? You're free and, you know, you don't have much. And she said, yeah, you know, maybe a couple of hours a day and I'll be happy to do that. In any case, I'm idle, so it'll get me something to do. And that's how we got started. Um, within a few months, obviously, it kind of became like a full-time business. Yeah. And one of the things we realized earlier, I mean, we had never done this. And, and you know, both of us, we don't really have that corporate uh, experience or background. So we are total opposites. We didn't know that at the time. And, uh, you know, I expected that everything that I do, she should be able to have a similar skill set if she wants to do this because we were kind of partners in the business. Mm -hmm. And she also felt the same. We were very lucky, Reg. A um, gentleman by the name of Ernesto, I think you know Ernesto, yes. uh, people yeah. might know him. Um, Ernesto was running a session in Dubai. Um, and you know, you mentioned Gautam, Gautam Linglani. Um, he got us to attend this session. And literally, you know, this was the, within the first few months. Um, so we were already banging head with each other, right? And the husband and wife team, like you say, the 24 seven together. Yeah. Um, and here we were literally always conflicting because, uh, you know, we were just kind of stepping over each other's toes. And one of the things we learned on this program with Ernesto was, um, you know, he did an assessment. Um, so you kind of do behavioral styles and you understand what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. And the report came and literally we were opposites. We were total opposites. So at first instance, I was like, okay, what does it mean? You know, does it mean we're not compatible? Mm -hmm. um, and he said, no, what this means is you literally complement each other 100%. Um, if you can recognize and appreciate her strengths and if she can do the same for you, you realize that both of you have a role to play and let her do what she does best and you do what you best. And, and you know, that's how we formed that team. So I think from then on, we actually started respecting um, each other. So, you know, if, if I went out, I'd never expect her to do that. And, and she respected me for doing that because while I did that, she could do what she did and I respected that. Um, and that's what it has been for the last 15 years. So that's the first I, tip, yeah, is find out, take time to get to know your, your strengths, your weaknesses, a bit like, you know, our model, the DNA profiling model with the nine different uh, areas. Yeah. You could have two so, opposites. So, and then define your job role, yeah? And no, don't cross over each other and give each other respect. So that, you know, we learned, of course, if you're going to be running a business, you're going to have multiple roles and find out people who have strengths, which will also mean sometimes um, that these are people you, um, you may not even, you know, get along Well, I wouldn't say get along, but you may have a difference of opinion, that, that, you know, because they're good at what they do. So you've got, you got to be comfortable and you've got to be willing to form a team which is based on strengths, depending on the role they're in. Mm. Um, and if you do that, you know, that's how you form your dream team, right? Um, and then, you know, it's, you've got everything in this world. I mean, this, this yeah. works. Um, so we, we were lucky to figure that out earlier, and it's still a journey, it's still a journey, because having said all of that, the question then comes, okay, husband, wife, team, um, we're 24 seven together. So I think then it comes to having that, uh, you know, self sort of um, consciousness and discipline of how do you divide your time, you know, because you're going to be talking about the same things. So do you have ground rules in place now? We need to, and you know, even having those rules, sometimes it's easy to breach those rules. So we got to hold each other accountable. I'll tell you who holds us accountable. Our 13 year old son, Aryan. Um, he's now at that age and we got to respect that as well. But the other thing I also learned in this journey, um, Reg, you know, people talk about having balance in life. Um, 
you know, you draw this circle and you find all those different things about life and you've got to have a good balance around that. I learned again, and this is through our founder and uh, visionary officer, Dr. Ivan Meisner. Um, again, he heard a workshop for couples. A lot of PNI franchises are couples in different parts of the world. And what he taught us is you'll never find balance in especially what you do. It's a great lifestyle business. As long as you can find harmony. And what that's asked me is, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, you've got to kind of fit in your, your life. Your, your life has to be kind of that. Because, you know, I, I mean, the classic example he gave at the time, you know, he said, take, take the president, you know. Um, how does a president of a country have balance in his or her life? They got to create a harmony whereby, you know, they make sure that, you know, whatever they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, they still, you know, got the family there and everything else taken care of. Um, so we learned that earlier on. So, you know, we go on vacation, we go on holidays, um, we travel a lot, uh, we're quite lucky and blessed to do that. Um, and, and, you know, we'll find ourselves doing a bit of work while we're doing that. But we always find time to then enjoy the other pleasures. So, yeah, those ground rules help. Um, and then just consciously just taking stock and making sure that, you know, uh, you're not reaching them. But it, it still continues. It's a journey. It is yeah. still a It is a journey. And, and, and yeah, there, there has to be a time to switch on, switch off rules around the dining table, because at the end of the other ways, the dining table becomes the boardroom uh, you know, for, for a husband and wife team. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of lessons to be learned there. Strengths, like you said. Uh, what about when it comes to accountability? for each other of who's doing what in the business. Do you, do you find there's accountability? Do you keep each other accountable from it's, a performance point of view? It, who's meant to do what and is it being done? Um, we've found that a challenge actually and we've found that it's probably better to have an external accountability partner um, for both of us as, as a couple and individually because you know when you choose to hold each other accountable, um, it can be done I think, but it's about knowing and understanding each other. And um, if your relationship as a husband and wife or a couple is gonna come in the way, um, some people can do that, others can't. And we've learned that you know, one of us cannot. So it's probably better that uh, we actually have somebody else who does that for us. Um, and that way it works. Because um, you know, we, we've tried, um, it doesn't always work. And I think the same can apply for, for family members. You mentioned brothers. Um, other family members, I think it's important to perhaps have, um, because everybody's different. And as much as everybody understands accountability and the importance, and uh, I, I think, you know, when it comes to family businesses, um, it, look, there's so many factors in play over here, right? There is a business interest, there's a family interest, there is a, a bigger purpose out there. And, and we're talking about family business, and most of the time it's, it's extended family, um, you know, so, so there's so many other things to, to look into. So in my opinion, I think it's always good to have that third person up there. Well, I agree because, you know, as you know, that's the work we've been doing for many years and uh, definitely didn't pay you to say that. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, facilitation of, of board meetings, family meetings, running family forums is important. What about future when it comes to your son uh, and you've looked at other family businesses, you know, you know, from Kenya, what, what's, what's the aspirations there now? You know, he's at the right age to at least be a good observer to get a feel of what mom and dad are doing um, and, and that will have an impact on him, you know? So do you see him getting involved at some stage or is there already talent there in other areas or other passions or interests that, the, that, that he has? Good question. Um, yeah, he's at an age, he's turning 13 this, uh, this weekend. Um, you know, we're blessed. He's pretty much an all-rounder. He's good at pretty much everything he does, uh, other than academics as well. He's got strong interest in music. Um, and like you said, he's exposed to a lot of things. You know, we, we, our philosophy in raising him is try and expose him to as many different things as possible. Um, and then of course, you know, let him make those choices and guide him. So we're not really having any expectations. I think it might be a bit premature at this point to say he'll get involved if he'll not. Um, has, he been we, to, has he been to the BNI events? Totally. I mean, he's a BI yeah. baby, right? Yeah. He was conceived at a BNI convention. <laughs> um, yeah. And you'll be amazed, you know, a lot of things, um, I mean, he's still growing up. Uh, we are like, because like you said, sometimes dining table can turn into the boardroom. Um, in the car, you know, we'll be conversing and uh, he'll be doing his own thing. 
but he's taking in a lot of things. I don't think a lot of us may realize our children are listening and observing. Mm -hmm. um, and I am, you know, he surprises us from time to time because, you know, he'll say things, he'll talk about technical terms, mm -hmm. uh, whereas he's never been to a formal sort of training and he's not that age, but he has that knowledge because he's exposed to that. So, yeah, yeah, he's very much a, a BNI sort of, I mean, he could go in there and do things um, which, you know, a lot of members would find surprising. Um, no, we can't that's, but that's always the dream, isn't it? To have that succession plan, but at the same time, it's not about forcing the next generation. If he's got a passion for something else, then that's where you support it. But then you, you know, as the owners of your business, then one also then has to decide, does succession happen with a professional team? You know, everyone goes through a journey at some point of being in the business, being on the business or has other aspirations or hobbies or interests later on in life. So have you given that consideration? You know, would you ever replace yourself with a professional CEO? 100%. So, you know, the good thing, Reg, is the business that we are in, BNI, it's a franchise. Um, and when it comes to a franchise, it's basically a system, right? And you develop the system such that it builds value so that tomorrow, if you want to exit, um, it, it's attractive to an investor or to somebody else who wants to do it. So. That's the way we're looking at this. You know, in the early days, it was, this is for life. This is our business. But lately, we, we've said, no, nah, we're going to build this. And at the right time, if we ever feel that right, uh, we, we want to exit. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure and the system is built for that. So, so, you know, obviously, it's emotional. We're very passionate about what we do. But we can still find other ways of still, you know, finding and fulfilling that passion and purpose. Yeah. Um, but it's from a business point of view, um, yeah, we, we're pretty much, uh, um, you know, planned that it's going to be a system and uh, if and ever. But right now, you've got 600 entrepreneurs relying on you. Yeah, but look, um, when you say relying on you, I, you know, it would be nice for, for them to say, yeah, it's because of BJ. But, you know, the brand is more powerful than I am. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure anybody else who, who would do this, uh, if you find the right person, they can do an equal or better job. Um, I think it's a brand. People buy into the brand. Um, we've had a new CEO in the organization for the last five years. So as much as you know, we have our founder and chief regional officer, Dr. Ivan Meisner, who started this, uh, he himself believes this. And if you look at what uh, our CEO, Brent Weimann, has achieved uh, in the last five years, it's incredible. It's incredible. So if someone did, BJ, if someone did, um, for Anna and yourself, give you a check tomorrow morning, it's, it's a decent amount, um, good valuation on the business. And they give you the check, you shake hands, and you're done. And next week, what, what, what would you do? Steve, um, well, first and foremost, I got to ask myself, would I accept that check right now? <laughs> but let's say it's a decent amount. It's more than you could ever dream of. Your valuation is very high, you know, 9x, 10x, and uh, yeah. I would still continue doing what I do in a different way. Um, so, you know, if you, if you, it's about people, helping people, uh, supporting people. The organization is such that we now have a global network. I'd be more than happy to, you know, um, fly to different countries. I still do that. I, I still get invited. Um, and help others, mentor them, you know, guide them. So there are so many franchises, startups out there uh, within the organization who are looking at, you know, what they can do. Um, so I'd continue that. So that's a fulfilling and purposeful for me, you know, so it's not always about the money. Um, so yeah, if, if that was taken care of, um, I would still continue doing what I do. So I don't see myself stopping this um, or, or, you know, doing something different. Uh, I may venture into other things, uh, but I'm well, obviously sitting on some boards now. So I'm just exploring with you, you know, that that's a path that people end up taking where they end up sitting on. I was interviewing someone earlier today who's on nine boards yeah. and is very fulfilled and satisfied with doing that. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So leaving, leaving on one thing, if it was 10 years from now, I always ask this question, 10 years from now, December 31st, 2030, we're sitting down over lunch or dinner. What, what's one thing you'd be telling me of what's happened in the last 10 years? Um, well, all the stories, you know, you meet, every day is different. You meet lots and lots of people and you hear all the great successes. 
what would really, you know, what I'll be sharing with you is all the, um, you know, footprints that I have had the opportunity to leave in other people's lives and whose lives have I had uh, a chance to touch. That's one, and then the, the opposite of that, right? So who has touched my life in this journey? Um, you know, these are the relationships I've built. And that's, in my, in my um, formula, that would be the measure of, of success. Mm. You know, it's, it's about those relationships. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the, the, the wealth and the finances come second. That's great. Well, you know, on that note, we really want to appreciate your time today and everyone who's watching. You know, if you like the video, hit the like button, helps the algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to, to listen to other great people like BJ with the other show series that we've got. And go to the description area to find out more about BNI in the UAE and other countries as well. And also the details to connect with BJ directly. So hopefully you can build a trusted relationship with him. Uh, BJ, on that note, thank you very much. God bless you, you and your family, and, and look forward to catching up again soon. Thank you so much, uh, Reg. It's been a great pleasure and fun doing this. Thank Wish you all the best.